What's up Metalheads? My name's Jamie, this is the Blades and EDC channel, and today I am doing a re-upload of my overview of the Spyderco stovepipe. I actually already uploaded this video, and uh, I think about 20 people watched it before someone informed me that there was an audio issue midway through the video, and I checked it out, and uh, I don't know what happened. Something happened when it was uploading or what, but... Um, yeah, when I checked it, the audio was really bad the last half of the video, so I'm going to do it again. It'll probably be a little quicker this time, because I was uh, kind of drooling over this knife in the first one. So, I'm still drooling over this knife, to be completely honest with you. First off, I'm going to give a big thank you to Jeff for sending this into the channel to let me check out. I greatly appreciate it. And it's pretty clear from looking at this knife that Jeff has not used this one, and uh, I don't blame him. I probably wouldn't use it either, because uh, who knows how long they're going to make these. And... Uh, could be valuable down the road if it's like some of the other spider codes they just you know drop and uh, don't keep making um i did i actually had him send this in for something other than an overview uh, i got another video coming with this knife um it's been delayed because someone uh who's working on another knife that i'm going to be using in that video got covid so some things got pushed back but uh that video will be coming video will be out soon and uh I can't wait to do that one. That one's going to be an amazing video to do. I'm really, really excited to do that one, to get the other one in hand and do a comparison between the two. And that's all I'm going to tell you for now. You'll you'll learn the rest when I do that actual video. So, um, all right. So, I'm going to give you some specs on it real quick and talk about it and give you some size comparisons because that's one thing I will say about this knife right off the bat is I thought it was bigger. I honestly thought when I got it in hand, it would be too big for me and I probably wouldn't like it. But in actuality, it's not that big at all, and it's perfect for my size hand. Perfect size knife that for a medium size hand, in my opinion. Um, so I really like the size of it for sure. All right, let's give you some specs real quick. Overall length is 6.75 inches. Closed length is 4 inches. Blade length is 2.78 inches. Blade thickness is 157 thousandths. It's 20 CV blade still. It has a hollow grind. Uh, tip up uh, right hand only and weight is just under five ounces i think it's 4.8 4.9 ounces somewhere right in that range which is uh pretty heavy for such a small knife reason for that being though is uh they, they did no milling inside here but honestly with this knife i don't mind that extra weight it just the look of it the feel of it that five ounces is great it makes it feel makes it feel better in hand i think it makes it feel more premium more well made if that makes sense it just feels feels really good in hand the weight does i should say um all right let's give you some size comparisons and then i will discuss pros and cons of this knife and my thoughts on it I'll give you some spider codes to start out with um, one that i have here that's close in size to it that will probably surprise you one of the closer in size as far as length goes spider co chaparral um it is actually not much longer than a chaparral although it's much thicker and heavier i mean it's almost it weighs more than two chaparrals so uh yeah it's it's probably got a quarter of an inch on the chaparral so not not much bigger than the chaparral at all um next one that's going to be close in size to spider coat anyway it's gonna be the pair of three but it's quite a bit shorter than a pair of three probably at least a half an inch shorter than a pair of three um let's see here keep some spider codes out here if you guys look at since we're gonna have spider codes out uh well we'll get rid of the pair of three um here's the pair of two so it's going to dwarf the uh, stovepipe. Pair of twos, two inches longer. I don't know, inch and a half, two inches longer. Here's the uh, Spyderco Yojimbo. And again, uh, quite a bit shorter than that. And we'll go ahead and do the Shaman. Spyderco Shaman. Um, again, quite a... Here, let's just line the butts up. Yeah small knife man in the pictures i don't know why in the pictures to me i just thought it was bigger i never really paid attention to the you know what it said the size was but when i hear seven inches i don't think it's that small you know you get so many knives in hand you don't really think about it but it's actually quite small um but for me i like that i'm glad it's smaller like that for my hand size i really like it so uh great 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 for my hand size all right let's give you a couple other non spider co knives here is the Devo Knives Stout. And here is the Dimco 8020.5. So, uh, yeah, quite a bit sh shorter than both of those. Uh, let's go ahead and do a couple of the regulars here. I don't have my bug out here at the moment. I left it in my car. 
so but here's a good one uh, the Wii banter be a good comparison um, almost identical in length to the banner it actually may be just a hair longer than the banter maybe an eighth of an inch if that so but uh, blade length would go to the banter but overall length goes to the stovepipe here is the QSP Penguin. Again, the Penguin is not a big knife, and uh, it's got almost a half an inch, quarter inch to a half an inch on the uh, stovepipe. And we'll go ahead and do a Vist Variant PE2. Yeah, so, which is again, not a large knife. So that should give you an idea on the size there. Um, kind of polar opposites in the shape there, right? <laughs> got a sway back and you got kind of curved in the other direction so all right one thing i am going to say right off the bat about this knife is uh, well first off this one's made in taiwan at their taichung plant and uh who, who they make some of the best knives in my opinion uh spider coat knives and um but this knife is uh 420 dollars so one thing i want to say is did they do that on purpose uh, the designer, this is, I can't remember, something Bill the Butcher or something like that design. Rhythm, Rhythm. Um, is, he, is he a cannabis connoisseur? I don't know. Maybe so. Maybe they did 420 for a reason. Maybe not. Either way, whatever they did 424, I think is, uh, I think it's a bit overpriced. Um, I know it is a very nice knife. I'll, I'll give it that. Um, but I think 420 is a little steep. 350, 300 to 350 range. 350 I would be okay with. 420 seems a bit excessive in my opinion, considering what you can get out there, you know, in that price range coming from uh, Taiwan. Um, uh, you know, if it was made in Golden City, Colorado, I may feel a little different about that price, but, you know, it is what it is. You know, it's, it's you know, price is going to be one of those things that's kind of... Uh, subjective you know if uh if you're cool with it you're cool with it honestly i'm not i don't hate it um i i would you know if it was in my budget i would pay that for it um just to have this knife because just look at this thing man this thing looks like it's uh post apocalyptic you know would be my thoughts on it kind of like something you'd see in mad max or uh one of those movies um just a really cool looking knife great action on the knife um, I have not cut with this knife, obviously. This is not my knife, and like I said, it doesn't appear that anything has been cut with this knife. It looks brand new, and uh, I haven't even cut paper with it. But there's lots of reviews out there. People have cut it, cut it, and I haven't seen a whole lot of people do reviews on sharpening this knife, though. This would be a very easy knife to sharpen, though. Um, I don't think many people that bought these bought them to use them. They bought them to put them in their collection, so I don't think you're going to see a lot of these out there that are used heavily. Um, which, if I owned this knife, it would be the same. I wouldn't use it. I would love to have two, though, when I could uh, use them, when I could put away. Um, all right, the big thing with this knife is going to be uh, ergos. You know, I've heard people say lots of things about this knife, most of it negative. Uh, one of the ones I've heard is it's like holding uh, a pine cone, you know, <laughs> when you squeeze it, it's like holding a pine cone. Well, for my hand size, I don't feel that way. Um, there's a couple spots on it that are definitely hot spots, but... It's not terrible. One thing I've seen a lot of people say is this right here, which is sharp, the, right here on the scale. That is sharp, but with my hand size, that lands right in between my ring and middle finger. It does not poke me at all. No matter how I try to grip this knife, it ends up right there in that spot, and it's not an issue for me at all. Um, this little ramp here, or I don't know what you would call this, a thumb spot. I don't know, whatever you would call it. There's probably a, an actual technical name for it, but where you rest your thumb, Works out really well for me. It's perfect for my hand size. And again, it does not affect this hot spot here. It does not get me. It's not a hot spot for my hand. Um, the only hot, main hot spot for my hand on this knife is this pocket clip. This spot right there, it is extremely sharp right there. Not cut you sharp, but you know, as far as for ergonomics, it's extremely sharp. And this one is too on this corner. Both corners are. And you know, it's something they could have easily fixed and not messed up the aesthetics of the knife, in my opinion. Just chamfered it down a little bit and sharp, you know, knock down that sharp edge, knock down those sharp corners there. Because no matter where I grip this knife or how I grip this knife, um, that corner right there is getting me right in this area right here under my middle or ring finger. Um, so that one's, and I don't see any way around it other than 
if you own one of these knives and you want to modify it, kind of sanding that down, then, uh, you know, it'd be a pretty easy fix, actually. But, uh, you know, if you're putting it in a collection, obviously you're not going to use that because you're not going to be using it, so it won't you, it's not going to matter. So you're not going to do that. The other spot on me, this knife that I'm not, that I don't really care too much for is right here. Um, I'm assuming this is just purely aesthetics, the way they've, you know, milled out the blade here and put these couple little notches in there because uh, it doesn't act as jimping at all. Um, it's complete, it's really slick, so um, it doesn't catch my thumb in any way. If I'm gripping back like this and I'm not fully choked up, it's just, and it's also uncomfortable. This little spot right here, that little, it does, it's not sharp, but when you press down your thumb, it's not comfortable at all on my thumb. And if you were to really be using this knife and pushing there, it's going to really bother your thumb. You're going to end up moving your thumb up here and choking up to, it's not really a finger choil, but similar to a finger choil, it's just in the design of knife. You're going to end up choking up here and putting your thumb there. Um, as far as the other grips, you know, pinch grip would be great. Put your, rest your finger out here for a, a detail cut. Again, they put this sharp edge there. If you want to put your index finger up there to do any precision cutting, um, it's not going to be comfortable. It would have been better if they would left that flat, in my opinion. I don't think it would have taken much away from the aesthetic. It would look a little less like a rhinoceros, but, you know, it would still be, it would still look really good. Same with this. I, the, it would be just as good, in my opinion, if they just kept this blade thickness all the way back and put some regular jimping there. Um, or at least put some jimping there and take out that little, that little, I don't know what that is or what it's intended to be. I can only think it's intended to be as a, you know, place to catch your thumb, but like jimping would, but it doesn't do that at all. It's completely slick and then it's uncomfortable. So, um, you know, there are lots of sharp corners and edges on this knife. You know, every, everything is sharp, right? They didn't chamfer anything down on this knife at all. Um, it's, you know, I, I don't think they were, you know, for Spyderco, this is not very uncommon. They weren't thinking about ergonomics with this knife. This knife was purely built for aesthetics and they knocked it out of the freaking park with aesthetics. In my taste, anyway. Love this thing. I absolutely love this thing. They didn't care about ergos. And, you know, all Spydercos, you know, whether it's the pair of three, you know, you got this choke up. They're all like that. You've all, you get excellent ergos on all of them. The Yojimbo 2, excellent ergos. Excellent ergos. The Shaman, all the Spydercos. Even the little Chaparral, you know. Fantastic ergonomics on this little knife. So, something spider code does probably better than anybody is their ergos you know um their knives are fully functional and they are very ergonomic and uh for most all hand sizes too they just work for everybody uh this one they didn't give a shit about excuse my language they give a shit about ergonomics of this knife i don't think this was purely aesthetics and they they accomplished exactly what they were going for it's a badass looking knife and i have no doubt in my mind that the blade still is going to be fantastic with it being spider co and 20 cv um, I, I don't think you can go wrong with, uh, any of Spyderco's, uh, blade stills, you know, they're probably doing some of the best jobs with their, uh, still out there as anyone, if not the best. One other spot that's not very comfortable is the lock bar. It's pretty sharp right there in that edge. Um, if you're just occasionally using the knife, it's not going to bother you. You know, if you're just occasionally deploying it and using it like a normal human being it's not going to bother you but if you're going to fidget with it that's going to become extremely uncomfortable on your thumb um let me see if i can push it and get to show up on my thumb here i'm just going to push it a few times show you my thumb so it's putting a dent right there and just in that little bit of use so again not terrible but definitely uh could be much better that's the thing about this knife you could do all these little tiny things and make this knife a freaking home run in both departments, honestly, and not take away from the aesthetics, you know? Fixing that pocket clip, knocking that down a little bit, doing a little something different right here and right here would not take anything away from the aesthetics of this knife. You can even keep this notch in the blade right here and just flatten that out and put some jimping there. It would not take away from the aesthetics. It would still look badass. It's, it's one of those knives you either love it or hate it, you know, the look of it. And I love it. And I think those things would be make this knife so much better. Um, when I first looked at it and I saw how this backspacer was done, I thought, well, that's probably not going to be good. I'm probably going to fill that. It's If I squeeze, it's probably going to dig in. It doesn't. The backspacer is kind of, you know, I don't know why they did that either. I, I guess, again, it's just aesthetics. 
how it sits down below the scales. Um, it looks fine, but it actually functions fine. It's not uncomfortable at all. So, um, yeah, I love this knife. I absolutely love this knife. I'd love to get one down the road, and I plan to get one of these down the road. Yeah, if I get one, I will not be modifying it or using it. I just want to have it and put it in my collection and uh, hold on to it and see what happens. Now, I would hope, hope they make more of these, you know, continue to make them and make some minor modifications to them you know do do things a little bit differently um and uh, yeah i think it's a i think it's a great knife great great knife out of all the spider codes i've had a chance to get my hands on this is up there near the top um as far as how much i like the knife as far as ergonomics it's not at the top but it's not that bad you know it's not as bad as i've heard other people say in my opinion it's not as bad as i've heard other people say it is not an overpriced pine cone <laughs> all right guys thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed the video hit that like button for me if you're new consider subscribing getting close to 1k i'm going to be a big giveaway at 1k and i uh, can't wait for that got something else coming i found out about that i'm not going to tell you guys about that i didn't ask for that someone just a uh a great great company out there just offered up and oh it's, you guys are gonna love it so keep it a surprise thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you on the next one